Hello everybody, welcome to the Christocentric meal, the daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Emil Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome everybody today to this great time of feasting in the word of his grace. I've co-hosting the broadcast with me, my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Hello everyone. Remember, this is Christocentric teaching. So listen with the Christocentric mind. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for grace, mercy. Thank you for the privilege of learning from your holy word. We have that revelation knowledge is gifted everyone connected to the broadcast today. The eyes of your understanding be flooded with light. We decree that whatever is not planted by God in your life and in your body is rooted out. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power flowing through the teaching of your word. And we declare that by the end of this session, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we've been examining the subject of the forgiveness of sins. And we saw the forgiveness of sins in Genesis. We also saw the forgiveness of sins under the law. Today we're looking at forgiveness of sin under the synoptic gospels or what we call the four gospels. The synoptic gospels. At this time, the law was still in force. The law was very much in force under the, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were books that the events occurred under the law. There is a similarity between the conditions of forgiveness under the synoptic gospels and the law. Until Jesus shed his blood, the New Testament wasn't in force. Mark chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 to 15 is where we get the Lord's prayer from, where he says, forgive us our sins. That will mean to pray to God to forgive your sins, thereby agreeing with what we see in the law. Note that, just like the Old Testament, conditions were given to receive forgiveness under this dispensation. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Forgive so that your Father in heaven will forgive you. Jesus could tell them to pray in this manner because the law was still in force at this time. And thus Jesus ministered under the law. Galatians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4 confirms that. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. So, he was made under the law. He was born under the law. Jesus operated under the law. So, because he was under the law, conditions were given for the forgiveness of sins. Matthew chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. So John was a prophet of the Old Testament and was not described as a prophet of the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 to 13. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. John was the last and the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. So he was a prophet under the Old Testament. Mark chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Remember again, this is under the law. 
On the contrary, Jesus was anointed of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 10, 38 and Luke 4, 18, you can read that further, talked about forgiveness of sins and never once mentioned confessing sins was in the same dispensation. In John chapter 8, verse 3 to 11, if you observe, John recorded that Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. What comes before the change of ways? No condemnation. And this is the gift that comes through Jesus. Then a change of ways. Jesus recognized the woman in John chapter 8 scenario sinned, but he was not holding her guilty for it. You know that woman caught in the very act of adultery? Mm. The Bible says they brought her to Jesus and they said they caught this woman in the very act. Mm -hmm. The law of Moses said, stone her for sin. And they asked Jesus, what do you say? And Jesus asked them, any of you that is without sin, cast the first stone. Now it was a temptation for Jesus because he couldn't have said, ignore the law of Moses. Mm. He came to fulfill that law. And he couldn't have said, stone the woman. He came to save sinners. So that's why it was tricky. It was nice. a temptation for him. But you know, under the law, if you break one, you break all. Mm -hmm. So Jesus went back to that law and used the law against his accusers. And he says to them, any of you that is without sin, cast the first stone. One by one, they disappeared. And then Jesus looked at the woman and said, neither do I condemn you. The gift that Jesus gives to the sinner is a gift of no condemnation, which is actually the forgiveness of sins. And he told her, go and sin no more. So Jesus was not holding her guilty for sin. He gave her the gift of no condemnation, the gift of forgiveness. And he showed her how to remain in that gift and enjoy the blessing that comes with the forgiveness of sins. In John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. There is no condemnation in Christ. There is no condemnation in God. That's why the woman was given the gift of no condemnation. The word condemnation has to do with guilt. It has to do with, you know, accusation. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See that? Not therefore that nobody is sent to hell because of sins. Nobody. Nobody goes to hell because of sins. People go to hell because they do not believe that Jesus to paid their sins. for sins. You know, there are people who misconceive this idea yeah. and accuse you of saying that uh, no matter how you sin, you can't go to hell. Because sin can't take you to hell. But they forget, okay, what takes you to hell? Did he say no matter how you live, you won't go to hell? But they don't look at the fact that we're saying that sin is no more the strength that takes you to hell, but your own rejection of the sin question or the sin solution. That's what takes you to hell. Yep. You know, when you reject God's offer, God's solution to sin, then you go to hell. But sin itself, otherwise everybody will go to hell mm -hmm. if he's sin that is going to take you to hell. People are so uh, quick to judge others and say, oh, you're not doing it right. Even those who are saying, why are you saying the grace of God has covered you? If the grace of God did not cover them, they will be guilty as well. Yeah. Because as you are saying it, you are, you've done something that you're not proud of, but they're not looking at that. But when you extend the grace of God to someone else, it's a problem. But they are okay to enjoy the grace of God. So yeah. It's a distorted, pharisaical uh, situation. Yeah. So... Sin is not the one taking you to hell. It's God's solution that you rejected that will take you. Because you are trying to make your own efforts to go to God, which can never qualify you. That is why we say sin is not the one taking you to hell. No sin can take you to hell. Yeah. Because Jesus dealt with it squarely. 
from the biggest, what you consider the biggest, to the smallest. He took care of it. So whatever category it is, his debt was more than enough to solve it or to pay for it because sin has to be paid for. He sold that sin it, he shall die. Jesus died, so he paid for it. So if you put your trust in him, then you are no more going to die because then it's double uh, jeopardy. You cannot go for the punishment that somebody already took. You know, we have God, it's a just God. Amen. Amen and amen. Matthew chapter 9, verse 6. But that he may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins, then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Further references you could read for further study at home will be Mark chapter 2, verse 10, and Luke chapter 5, verse 21, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. You see that? It was that situation where Jesus said to that guy, which one is greater? To forgive sins or to heal. But that you may know that the Son of Man has both power to forgive and to heal. And he said to the man sick of palsy, stand up, take your mat and go. He forgave him his sins and healed his body. Yeah. That said, we see that Jesus forgives sins as different from what John preached. Jesus was not under the law. He was the reality of the law. That is, he was the fulfillment of the law. Mm. So he forgives sins unconditionally, clearly seen. John preached forgiveness based on confession and repentance. But Jesus gave forgiveness unconditionally. In the Old Testament, it was conditional. In the Gospels, it was conditional. Jesus introduced a new reality where forgiveness was given without any condition as a gift of the grace of God. Mm. And that's exactly what Abraham experienced before the law. Yeah. Abraham believed and, and it was counted. credited to him for, for righteousness. righteousness. So there are no conditions in God for giving sins today because Jesus has met all conditions on the behalf of man. So anyone who believes in Jesus receives the eternal gift of no condemnation. The eternal gift of forgiveness. Once you believe in what Christ has done, believing in Jesus is believing in his sacrificial work, which is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lead us in the confession. In Christ is the fulfillment of the law. In Christ is the fulfillment of the law. I'm a product of the work of Christ. I'm a product of the work of Christ. I received forgiveness unconditionally. I have received forgiveness unconditionally. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for everyone connected to the broadcast today. We rejoice that we have the blessedness of the forgiveness of sins eternally by the intervention of Christ, our substitute. And we thank you that all of his righteousness has become our righteousness. So we're found in you, not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of the faith of Jesus Christ. We pray for everyone watching the broadcast today. We take authority over the hold of guilt and condemnation and accusation and the voice of the enemy. We declare broken right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for righteous consciousness that invade the thought process of everyone watching the broadcast today. And we rejoice for the gift of the forgiveness of sins that we have received in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the blessing today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a blessing to have all of you fellowshipping with us in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, when you realize what Christ has done for you 2,000 years ago, offered you, died for you, died on your behalf, and gave you an offer of eternal forgiveness by virtue of his work. Like I always say to people, God does not overlook sin. God does not deal with sin casually. God does not, you know, use kids' gloves in handling sin. God judges sin. God punishes sin severely. But the difference is he does it on himself he took the on punishment. our behalf. He took our place so we can take his place. That is the great news of the gospel of Christ. Just before we go, honey, one last word for viewers out there today. Amen. You know, when we sit to talk with you about Jesus, come with a mind also Jesus-centered. 
Otherwise, if you come with a critical mind to say, what are they saying today? Let's hear how far gone to the left they are. Then you will miss what is important. If you come with Jesus' mind and we have Jesus to present to you, you will definitely meet somewhere. Amen. Amen. And if you pay attention to the scriptures we're mm, reading, and that's read what I mean. They should follow. It's so clear. Mm. You need to so you, you need mind. to be deceived mm. not to understand what the scriptures are saying. It's so clear and open. Come with your mind. What Christ Come did mind. is eternal, is permanent on our behalf. He didn't do it for himself, he did it for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So be humble enough with an open mind before the world, mm -hmm. and the world will bring you clarity. Yes. You will rise totally you will dislodge your old ideas and be the better for it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, we look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Invite a friend, a family, tell somebody about what's going on on this platform. It's going to be another time of, you know, studying the word and looking at the scriptures in the light of Christ. And until we see all of you tomorrow, this is Rachel and Abel Damina saying, that, that the, the kingdom, kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner mind, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.